Good to be here today. Amen. Amen. You've already experienced the Lord. I know I have. It is a good day. It is a good day. And I feel so blessed. Well, you know, last week I, uh, I talked to you about friendships and uh, the value and, and what that meant and, and that there was a component to friendships and that you, you, you can't measure but that at some point you'll need it because, you know, you'll need to not be selfish, but you'll need to cash in on that. You know, you've invested. You know, that's why it says you invest in relationships because at some point you're probably going to have to see a return on it. You'll have a need and, and you'll be glad that somebody is there for you. Amen. Hey. <laughs> Amen, everybody's. You're dismissed. <laughs> the sermon has already served its purpose. But you know, then I got thinking, I said, well, you know, what? I, I never told anybody, actually, I even forgot to read the scripture right till the very last, but, um, but I thought, well, I never, I never left them with any direction. And so, being, the Bible being one of the, oh, I, I don't know you say, being a great book of relationships. And man, it's just continually of this story of a relationship, and it's a relationship um, in the Old Testament of complete failure on the, on the part of humanity. And especially the Israelites. It's just failure after failure after failure. And, but the theme through that is, is, is God's pursuit of relationship with us. And so, if it's, the, if it's the, the gist of the Bible, then it has to be important to us in our daily lives. But we continue to live in a a more segregated and separated culture than we ever have. That, at least I believe we can say that in most of our memories. I think that as happy and uh, as thankful as I am what the Supreme Court did, I, I know that it has just caused even more division. It's just exposed more division. And so it seems that, that we just don't, we're not in a relationship. We can't talk to each other. Right, we just go to our sides, and I know that's not God's way because that's you can say that's a relationship, but it's not a healthy relationship. I know that if you had, if, if you lived in a marriage or something like that, where that was continually the dynamics, that you wouldn't you wouldn't be comfortable in it. It'd be hard to hard to maintain that relationship. So, but I thought I found two places in the Bible where um, he talks about relationship. And Paul's one of them. We're going to read out of the book of Ephesians. But, you know, there's people that get hurt in all sorts of things. There's people who would never walk into another church because there was some uh, relational uh, problem there. They got offended in the church. People break marriages all the time. There's friendships. Paul, one of the big stories in the New Testament is Paul and Barnabas got into a tift, and it, the, I don't, it's never recorded that they did any ministry again together. Uh, so uh, it's hard. Relationships are hard. But I do know one thing, um, that if relationships are that important to God, uh, then, then we're probably going to be asked about them when we, when we answer, when we stand in judgment. He's probably going to answer, and he's probably going to know we'll have to answer for, uh, and give an account for our intentions, our actions, what motivated us, and even idle words that we spoke. You know, a lot of relationships, uh, once they splinter, and I think this is what the the Bible talks about in, in 18th chapter of Matthew, Jesus says, you know, you got to go and talk to the brother, uh, and if they don't listen, then you take somebody else and uh, take a group, present it again. If it doesn't work, bring it for the body. So there are ways to, to handle disruptions uh, in relationships. And one thing that really, it says, I said idle words, is that, you know, sometimes when, when a relationship splits, we don't start, or we just start the disagreement. Instead of going to that person, and, and Paul's going to fix it and tell us immediately what, how, to, how to deal with this, and, is that we, we pull to the side and then we start getting people to validate our position, right? We, started build, we start building a coalition, you know? Nobody's ever done that. I know I'm probably the only one here that's done that. And, and it's, it happens in the church. Matter of fact, the worst place it can happen is in the church. Um, Churches split all the time. 
And so that's, you'll be held accountable for your idle words and what, you know, building coalitions to prove your point rather than just go to the person and straighten it out right off the bat. But, you know, the all, the, if you don't want conflict, then the one thing you can do and to avoid it is just don't be in a relationship with anybody. Because if you're in a relationship with somebody, the conflict is going to be there at some point. I mean, 23 years of marriage, the reason we got to 23 is because we, we found a way to deal with conflict. If somebody's been married 50, 60 years, you've, you've got it down to an art form. You do, and, it's, and that's the reason you've survived, is because you have found a way to handle conflict in that relationship. And you have thought and made a decision that that relationship is worth whatever it takes to keep it, to keep it going. Amen? Because like I said last week, there's value in relationships that you just don't know at the time. Until you, I was, I can, I'm going to go out on a limb. You really don't know the value of a relationship until you've lost it. And God, God has valued this relationship so much that he gave his son for it. And so if, if, if God's willing to pay and sacrifice that much, then I think... Um, I think we should follow that. Amen? What's a priority to God should be a priority to us. So we're going to read in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. It's printed on the back of your um, bulletin. And Paul starts out with an imperative. Imperative being something he's telling us to do. I therefore... The prisoner in the Lord beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Everybody's called. That's what we're doing that, that, that spiritual gifts test for, to make sure that what God's called you to do, we can identify that and get you plugged in, get you steered that way. With, you've been called with all humanity and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Everybody heard that, right? You've got it. You can read it. I don't need to expound on it. But you know, there's three things right there that I find very uncomfortable, and I found uncomfortable uh, most of my life, was humility, gentleness, and patience bearing with one another. That doesn't come, that doesn't really not, doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. Right? It's, we got to work on that. And I know in, in the condition I was in one time, that was a big struggle to me. It's, it continues to be a struggle. Making every effort to maintain unity. I'm just going to say the application to that right now is that uh, unity is the most important thing right now is that we, we, we go through this and come out on the other side in, as one body. Amen? Amen. So maybe this is a timely sermon here. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all in all. In the body of Christ, we're all together. We're all brothers and sisters. There's no, there's, there's no separation. We're all called to participate in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. This relationship is just as important as your, your marriage, your, um, the relationships you have with your siblings, work, per, work people, uh, bosses, um, subordinates, everybody, how we build these relationships. And, and it's, we, think we're, we think that we're so individual, but we all are in, in a unit. Amen? And, and everybody, and when we go here, all we're doing is just spreading and going into different relationships, ste stepping into different contexts, but the laws and the, and the rules and the teachings that we learn here apply overall. Everybody, you think, well, that person doesn't go to church with me, they're not in my, my sphere or anything, and they're not even a believer, but you know what all I would say is they're not a believer yet. Right, everybody you see that's not that not that's go to church here, I would say that you should say they don't go to church with me yet. Right? Then I'm not in fellowship with them yet. I'm not I don't have a relationship with them yet. The person who brings you your your food and, and, and takes your money at the cash register, engage them because you and, and be in relationship with them. 
It's important for us to do that. And so we move down to 25. And so here's, here's, here's the meat right here. So then putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we all are members of one another. You hear that? Be angry, but do not sin. Well, what, what's he talking there? We, we know we're going to get angry, right? We know we're going to get rubbed the wrong way. But he says don't sin. What he's saying is don't let it, don't let it fester. Don't, don't go out and slander someone that you don't get along with. Don't go speaking behind people's back. Don't build coalitions um, just to validate your point. Just Sometimes just the best thing you can do is just keep your mouth shut. Just... <laughs> Somebody's probably thinking he needs to keep his mouth shut right now too. But to carry that anger over in, in, into a disagreement or a conflict is a sin. Because it's not, and I'm going, to tell you, I'm going to tell you why it's such a sin and why it's so bad. Because the devil is looking for any opportunity to come in and take over your life and destroy your life. Amen. And if you sit, he's just looking for a door. You open that, that's why... You don't want to drink alcohol and things like that because you're just looking. It's, it's, it could be a weakness at one point and the devil can exploit it. But if we sit in relationships and we don't talk to each other and we don't sit, we sit on those sides of the pews and we, we, we're just holding past grudges and everything, he's saying that's a sin. And at some point, what we don't reconcile will come back to bite us. It will because we just never dealt with it. And we're real bad about just not dealing. I'm the world's worst. I don't like conflict. Not at all. But the, what he's telling us, what the Bible tells us is if you don't deal with it, it'll just fester. Then years go by, then years go by, and then all of a sudden you'll need somebody or you'll need the body to come together to make a decision or something. Can't get people together because they never resolved any conflict. It's a sin. He says it's a sin to let that fester. Deal with what you got to deal with. Amen? Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room, listen, and do not make room for the devil. All the conflict that's in your life that is unresolved. It is like you got a, a five bedroom house and you're living in one and the devil's taking up residence in the other four. Just waiting for that opportune time. He'll let you live your life and not come in and let you live, get away with the little sins and stuff. But when everything's on the line, your marriage or something like that, he'll come in and take advantage of what he's got. And he'll, and he'll destroy it. Because that's his intention. That's not popular preaching, not popular teaching in the church today, but it's absolute biblical truth. You don't like it or not. It's not that I don't care. It's just that that's just the truth. I don't have to explain it that much. And then we come down to 29. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up. I know you heard that, didn't you? If it doesn't edify, don't say it. As there is need, but so that your words may give grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. This is imperative, and these, these are the rules that we live by because we've accepted the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen? So this is the expectation. This is the imperative. This is the way we live our lives. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malices. And then, just so simply, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, and then, if this just doesn't break your heart, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Man, if that doesn't convict you. Amen. It kind of, you know, the transgressions and the things that I've done against people and things that people have done against me pale in comparison to what we do to God when we deny Him, when He speaks to us and we go about our own way, we figure it out on our own. We mess it up and He comes in and straightens it back out for us. Amen. 
Live in the grace of Jesus Christ. Live, live a grace for life. Amen. So what I'm going to ask you, Ron, you'll come up. What I want to ask you today is what, what relationships in your life are sideways? Amen. I think I can, I can confidently say that there's not anybody here that doesn't have a, a relationship that is either strained or in, in not the best of shape. And my invitation to you today is to come down to this altar, repent, and ask God to come into that, that, that relationship and restore it, give you guidance on how to speak to people, how to, how to make that call. I haven't heard from you in a while. I know we didn't, we didn't leave on good terms last time. Humility is not a trait. It's not a, 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 good, a good thing. Uh, it, was not a, a, an else. it was not an admirable trait in Old Testament times. You had to be strong. You had, had to be authoritative. But you know, in the, it says, you know, we always heard the word meekness, supposed to be meekness. But what really meekness means is you don't go to one extreme or the other. That you're a balanced person. And if we're balanced people, then we can, um, we can find a way to resolve our conflicts. Amen? There's way too much conflict out there. And many times there's way too much conflict in here. I don't know about you, but this morning I really felt the Holy Spirit just sweep in here right off the bat. Amen? And... and and I don't, I don't want to be the one and I don't want to have to answer when I stand before God. And he says, I really tried to make a move in your church, but something stopped me. There was some unforgiveness. There was a lot of things that needed to be resolved before I could really come in there and stay there. Amen? The altar is the place to handle these things. We're going to go through some trying times. Amen? So let's prepare ourselves. Let's look under the carpet, see where we swept the dirt, get it out, clean it up. Amen? I ask you this in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. The altar's open. This is the place to deal with. If you need prayer, just ask. If you'll stand and turn to page two.